are joining us tonight stand all across this room. Wow, wow. Well, welcome to our monthly encounter night. We're excited for what God has for us. I have lost my voice, so I need everybody in this room to open your Bibles. How many have your Bibles? Let's go. Go ahead and open your Bibles with me. We're going to settle in. We're going to honor the Word of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Well, we're expectant for what God has for us this this evening, and we just finish a worship series every Sunday night, and uh, it's been really powerful, and it feels like God ordained that we would have uh, another key uh, leader of worship in the earth right now. Uh, Michael and Larissa Miller are with us tonight, and, and we're going to see what God has for us. But I want us to honor the Word of God. Open up your Bibles to Psalm 150. Thanks, God. Thanks for being here tonight. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're here. I really felt like tonight we were supposed to celebrate the victory of Jesus that we've been experiencing the last, I don't know, even a couple months, just the victory of Christ has been reigning in our house, in our movement, in so many people's lives. We've been seeing healings freedom, deliverance during worship, nobody laying hands on people, just the presence of God moving and manifesting. And when the presence of God is with us, He does everything, amen? And so I felt like we were supposed to lift up exuberant praise tonight as we open our evening together. Psalm 150 says, are you ready? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty expanse. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the trumpet sound. Praise Him with the harp and the lyre. Praise Him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise Him with the stringed instruments and the pipe. Praise Him with a loud cymbal. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Now, before we go into worship, I want you to put your hand beautiful neighbor and I want you to greet them and tell them you're so glad you're here tonight we're so glad you're here tonight and I want you to say prepare yourself for an encounter with the king of kings prepare yourself for an encounter with the lover of your soul tonight God bless you God bless you
You won't revel. 
Come on, let's have a shout of praise. Yeah. Yes. He's so good. It doesn't depend on us. By his grace. Woo. Yes, Lord, thank you. Perfect Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a good God.
wonderful in all your ways. Everything is from you. Everything is to you. You are all things. You are everything, Jesus. You are everything, Jesus.
How I love you. In all I love you. In all
We just had a pretty amazing weekend with Claudio Frazen and Open Heavens. So glad to have the Millers here tonight. But I've been so stirred. I feel like something is uh, shifted. It's just crazy to put into words. But I love what Claudio Frazen said, and I feel like I feel like the Lord's doing something tonight. He said, everything is birthed from a personal seeking of Him. You got to keep the fire burning through the circumstances of life. And I feel like, I feel like what the Lord is doing even tonight is there's like a red carpet he's laying out, an invitation for us to corporately, but personally seek the Lord. To set your face, to decide, I'm going to seek the Lord. And I, I was over there in worship and I, I began to think about times in the past of my life when you know, sometimes when you're going to seek God, it doesn't always feel like Brian and Jen Johnson are leading worship behind you. You know what I'm saying? It sometimes feels like you're just alone. And you're just singing and you're just going after God. And, and if you stay, I found staying in that place of just seeking after God's face, all of a sudden, I don't know how to put it into words, you find yourself in the middle of something that you didn't earn, that you were brought there by grace, and it's where there's this deep well of this presence that you, that you run into. But I want us to just pray right now for a, a corporate and yet a personal groan on the inside to grip each of our hearts that we would go beyond the surface, that we would let go of the mundane that we would repent from addiction to hype, to keep us pumped up. That we could truly see for our own hearts, Christ is enough. Thank you, God. So why don't you put your hand on the person next to you right now and just pray. I just feel like there's this intimacy with God thing right now. It's. Intimacy with Jesus. Intimacy with Jesus. Pray for a, a personal, deep encounter with God. Intimacy with the Lord. A pursuing of Jesus in the heart of every person next to you right now. God, let the deep, let the deep of you touch the deep of us. Take us beyond the mundane, God. Let the groan of the Spirit Grip us again. Let the groan of the Spirit grip us again, God. God, I pray, let the fire of God that only comes from knowing you well up in our hearts, God, that comes from knowing you. God, we repent for giving way to distractions. Let the groan of God.
sing baptize baptize me in fire just say it again too lift your hands tonight there's a spirit there's a spirit uh, uh, not just claudia being here but there is a grace for the fire of god an all-consuming fire of god that just burns up everything that doesn't matter in life I want us to, to end this moment just praying for the fire of God and a fresh baptism of the fire of God. How many guys want more of His fire? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to give you a key to more of His fire. Are you ready? Just say yes before He tells you what to do. Just say yes. Yes, God. I will go. And that's the way the kingdom of God works. We say, yes, God, I'll go. Whatever it is you call me to do. And there will always be enough, more than enough fire that you need for the moment when you get there. Amen. So God, I just pray, Lou Ingalls said, follow the tears. So Lord, I just pray, God, give us, give us tears again. Let the fire of God let the fire of God break our hearts for what breaks your heart, God. And give us tears again for what's in your heart. I'm praying, God, for a fresh baptism of, of tears, God. Let the fire of God, the fire of God, fire of God, fire of God. Just put your hand on your heart right now. I just want you to, to just whisper something to God. Just whisper, God. I, just let the groan of God just come up. Let the fire of God give me tears. For what's in your heart, Lord? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, Shh. Yes, God. 
I will go, I will go, I will go. Baptize me in fire, God. Baptize me in fire, God. The deep of me call to the deep of you, God. Jesus, thank you, God. Why don't you just turn around and look, look at somebody, give them a hug, and just tell them there's more to come. Amen. Let the fire of God just continue to burn. Jesus. God. Thank you, 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 God. Turn to someone next to you and say, I'm so glad you came. <laughs> so glad you came. If you are here and you've been traveling from far to get you, you're from another country and you've come and you found yourself in the room uh, and you're visiting us, I want you to stand very quickly. If you're visiting from another country, I want you to stand very quickly. Keep standing. <clears throat> Keep standing. You know, keep standing. Bethel Church, it never gets old that the nations would come to a little town like this not because of the great restaurants in town, not because of the, the great attractions to see, but that people would come from all over the world because something's happening here. Turn to someone next to you and say, something's happening here. Where, where are you guys from over here? These guys here. Give it up for Argentina over here. Where, where are you guys from over here? Where, Australia and the UK. Give it up for the Australia and the UK here. Just that whole row. Why don't you just hold hands? That whole row right there. Holy Spirit, we ask that Your fire would rest upon them right now. The glory of God would touch them, God. We pray for Australia and we pray for England. We ask that Your fire would rest upon them in Jesus' Name. Wow, wow, wow. Turn to someone next to you and say, something's happening here. Where are you guys from? The Netherlands. Sorry? Canada. If you're from Canada, raise your hands. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Where are you guys from over there? Switzerland. Thank you for coming. All the way from Switzerland. Where are you guys from over here? So, from Sweden. Thank you. Wow. Crazy. Crazy. From Spain, yes! Come on. There's three overflow rooms, three overflow rooms right now 
If you are in the overflow room, open up your hands. Holy Spirit, we ask that your fire would touch the overflow room. That there be an overflow of the fire tonight and then Jesus' name. Every person watching online, just hold on to your seats. Where are you guys from? From Taiwan, thank you. Wow, it's amazing. Where, someone at the back, Shashal. New Zealand. From Brazil? New Zealand. New Zealand, sorry, New Zealand. Come on. Someone else, yeah. South Korea. South Korea. Come on. Where, where are you from? From Russia. Yes. Come on. You guys, where are you from? From Scotland. I love it. Crazy, hey? You, you guys at the back there? Say that again. From Norway. Wow, give it up for Norway. And these two over here. From Singapore. Come on. And this family over here, where are you from? From Switzerland. Yes, God. My goodness. Turn to someone next to you and say, the nations are coming. If you're from America and this is your, you're visiting us, I want you to stand very quickly. If you're from America and you're visiting us, you've traveled to be here. We wanna thank you for coming. We wanna thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. It, it'll never get lost on us that people would come to a little city like this, not because of the restaurants, but because of the fire of God. Bless every restaurant in town because they're hungry for the fire of God. Bethel Church, can you just for 30 seconds pray that every guest that comes here would have an encounter with God? Just open up your hands, start praying in tongues that every guest that is here today would get a radical touch from God. God, we ask, jealously we ask. They've wise men travel, they have traveled today to be here and we ask in the name of Jesus that they would get touched by God. There'd be an impartation that they would take back to their local churches and there'd be a move of God, signs, wonders and miracles back there in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Why don't you just give the Lord a clap because He's brought people. We're gonna do offering reading number one. So why don't you put that up on the screen. You know, the best, the best uh, preparation for worship is not a rehearsal, it is a surrendered life. And the best investment isn't your money, it is a surrendered life. I want you to put your hand on your phone, your wallet, whatever represents your bank account. <laughs> I want to pray over you. Holy Spirit, you pray this after me. Holy Spirit, I surrender my life. I surrender these finances and I put them in your hands, God. Do with them what you want. In Jesus' name. Right there, that's the best preparation for increase in the kingdom. Why don't you read this with me? Why don't we all stand? Come. I'll tell you what's gonna happen. We're gonna read this. You're gonna say it as loud as you can in your best South African accent. <laughs> and then the band's gonna start playing and we're gonna rush the buckets here and we're gonna put our offering in the bucket uh, for some of you, you're just gonna be paying digitally, but for some of you, I, I feel like you're supposed to come forward just as an act of faith. And if you are even paying digitally, I think you're supposed to come forward just as an act of faith saying, I surrender this, I surrender this. Okay, so with your best South African accent, as we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for 
jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interests and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! And as the band starts to play, by faith, would you surrender your, your, uh, surrender your finances and would you come rush the buckets here? We love you, Bethel Church, and we love every visitor that's come today. loves us a lot. I mean, wow. Go ahead and sit down. If you can find a seat. What a beautiful, thank you, worship team and dancers and congregation. Wow. So special. Thank you for all you in the overflow. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is why we're building a new building. I don't know if you know that, but one day we will all get to be in the same room together. Can't, I cannot wait for that day, actually. Well, we have absolutely, how many know Jesus loves you? How many know God is generous? And he loves to give us good gifts, right? And the best gifts we get to receive are actually people. And tonight we have the gift of people. And who, the, who, who this, I've lost my voice over the last few days from open heavens and everything else going on, but this couple has actually served this house. I think quite possibly they have preached more in one week than most people do when they visit here. Uh, Michael and Larissa Miller came from Dallas and they preached Tuesday or Wednesday to our staff meeting. Then they preached at our school of ministry. Then they preached at Open Heaven several times. Then Larissa preached at Twinview this morning. And now Michael is preaching tonight. This couple has laid their life down for our house. Thank you. Thank you. And that is the kind of, yeah, you can, yeah, go ahead. Well, <laughs> about people, so, <laughs> but honestly, oh, 
you guys are precious. Uh, honestly, their uh, heart of intimacy and prayer to just get with God and say, God, you're enough. The, the birth a movement called Upper Room that we all get to have the, the honor and the privilege to receive from. But this couple, what they have sacrificed as laid down lovers of the cross is probably we will never know until eternity, but they are true servants of the King and uh, absolute gems to our house. One more thing. I can't even believe that this is the type of people they are. They left their four kids. They spent a whole week here at Bethel. And today is Michael Miller's birthday. So we just wanna, we just wanna make sure you have cake on your birthday. So we're gonna sing together, church, are you ready? Will you guys please welcome Michael and Larissa Miller from Upper Room. That was awesome. Thank you. Oh, I'm, thank you for singing to him. That was so precious. We need the Lord to multiply the cake. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> um, well, you're gonna hear from Michael tonight, but I just wanted to say hello and thank you for, um, for receiving us with such open hearts and open arms. We're truly honored and grateful. We, um, Upper Room wouldn't exist if it weren't for this house and all that we've learned, um, all the seeds that were planted in us many, many, many years ago. And it's even sweet hearing Brian and Jen sing that song tonight because it brought back Lots of precious memories with Jesus, so. Will you uh, pray for me? Yeah. So, Please. let's pray. Let's pray. Would you just. Oh, Lord, we honor you. We love you, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. Thank you for being in our midst. Lord, I pray that we would be transformed tonight by the renewing of our minds. Do something supernatural, Holy Spirit. Cut off what needs to be cut off. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, strengthen what needs to be strengthened. Oh, Holy Spirit. We ask you collectively, Lord, we want to hear from you. Your words are life to us. Your words are life to us. So give us ears to hear. Give us eyes to see, Lord. We entrust everything that would, would concern us today, that would distract our minds and hearts. We entrust our families to you our calendars, our schedules, our phones, our emails, our what's tonight, what's tomorrow, Lord. We entrust to you, help us to be present to your presence, Lord. Thank you for Michael. God, fill him with your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Yes, Amen. Thank you, Thank you, baby. Thank you. Um, Hey, thanks for that. This is my birthday gift that I get to be here um, with you guys, truly. Uh, it has felt like family all week, and so uh, we are giddy. Um, we miss our kids, but if they were here, we would probably stay longer. Uh, we have just uh, so enjoyed our time with, uh, not only in the conference, but just all the things around the conference, all the people you meet. Uh, we got to have dinner with the Crandalls and Joe and Ben, and just on down the line, thank you guys for hosting us so well. It's just been such a, such a treat. And I wanted to also think, um, I know that you guys mentioned all the nations, but if you're, uh, if you're a local, not in school, but if, if, up, if, upper room, if Bethel is your church, 
Uh, I know we have a lot of students, but a lot of the students have come here from afar. But if this is your home church and you live in Reading, would you just stand to your feet? I want to honor you. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I want to... I, I want to stay standing, please, and then, and then hopefully we're going to do to you what just happened to the visitors. That's the goal. Um, may call Rich up here to do that. Um, it, 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 it is such a blessing um, to be at Bethel Church and what you guys have been caring and stewarding now for decades. Um, I have just seen a small, small, small on a small scale what a movement can do to a local body. And it is such a blessing, but there are also so many challenges. And I just wanna thank you for what you have said yes to, what you have lived out because your faith is heard around the globe. Uh, communities like ours are doing what we're doing because we saw a house. It wasn't just a messenger, although I love the messengers from this house, but the message has been housed with the people. And I wanted to just thank you for giving your yes to building this house along with, with Bill and the team and all the leaders and the school, but on a local level, you guys living in proximity to Jesus day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, it has touched the nations. And I just wanted to say as a pastor, thank you for uh, all the sacrifices that you've made, all the hidden yeses that no one gets to see that you have added to building brick by brick this house that is called Bethel Church. I am really thankful. So can we, if we're not a part of Bethel Church, can we now stand and just roar and thank God for these people? Thank you guys so much. It's amazing. All right, and let's do this. One more thing, one more thing. If you're one of those locals, now that everyone's standing, if you're one of those locals, raise your hand. And if there's someone near you that has their hand raised, let's blast them. Just ask Jesus to blast them. Just say, God, get them. Say, thank you, Jesus, for their yes. Keep your hand up until someone comes and prays for you. God, just refresh those that have refreshed so many in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this house. Thank you that the latter glory will be greater than the former. Thank you for a coming glory, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing still at Bethel Church and this yes that's in this family's heart. Say for greater glory, greater fire, Lord. Greater measures of your presence, Lord. Greater measures of intimacy. Greater, greater measures of oil. Fresh oil upon your hearts. Fresh oil, unity, Father. Release a unity that's found in your glory, Lord, a oneness of heart, a oneness of mind, singularity of vision, singularity of focus, God. We just say, get them in Jesus' name. Come on, 60 more seconds, just whack them. Just say, get them, God. Ho, 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 ho. Fresh joy. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, give someone a hug, grab a seat. What's up, bro? Desi? Hey, uh, hey I, have, I have two, two words. One is, one is, I think, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> One of them's whoa. Uh, two words, whoa. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I have two, two things I want to share. Um, and then we're going to hop back into just adoring Jesus. Um, uh, one of them was, was confirmed tonight by, by a song that was sung. And, uh, and I wanna, I'm just gonna share this. The Lord had shared it with me uh, about six months ago and, and I felt like it was also 
uh, for us tonight. And, and I, I want to say just as, for those that don't know uh, me, I pastor a church in Dallas, and I love the local church. Um, but if you cut me open, um, I just, I've, I've met some, some Brits. There's, there's so many nations here, but I met a few Brits. And I'm like, hey, listen, I took the DNA test, you know, where you spit in a deal. And I'm like 91% British, which is awesome. I know. So like, I've, I, all of a sudden, if you're British, you're like, oh my gosh, we, we have this, this, this thing. Like, you know, I feel, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm a Texan, but I don't talk like a, a British man, but evidently my blood is saying I'm British. And so I, I wanna say this, if you cut me open, you did a, a, a DNA test of me in upper room, w- w- this is family. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are here. My wife and I tried to move to Reading. Um, we, we love this house. We have been deeply impacted by the fathers of this house. And again, by, by the uh, people of this house, so much so that we were ready to come here. And so I just, it's with, with immense honor and love and, um, and, and I feel as if, if, if you've been blessed by the upper room, we're saying, hey, you guys have scattered seeds around the earth and we're bringing some of that fruit back to you. So if you've been blessed by upper room, it's your fruit actually coming back to you because the seeds that you guys have sown in our nation um, have really gone deep in our hearts. And, and we may not have the same accent, you know, we may not be in the same geographical location, but there's something within our DNA that, that is, is, is from this house. It's, it's like, like kind of fruit. But one of the things that I felt like the Lord told me uh, to share tonight, and this is, I feel like there has been a shift over this weekend, um, especially with Claudio. Like, what a, where, it, who is that man? I mean, <laughs> I just, I don't understand much of what he says, but my spirit is just like, oh my gosh. Mas fuego, like mas fuego. I understand that, mas fuego. And he's like, yes, mas fuego. So uh, we exchanged numbers today and that's all I knew to type him was just mas fuego. He was like, I'm in. So I, I think I'm just gonna keep texting him that. Um, but uh, I do feel like that, that, that there's something that, that is fresh and, and, and that the Lord has rekindled. And, uh, and I, I heard this phrase, I heard this phrase out of 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, verse 14. And, and I think it's for this weekend, but I also think it's for the house and community. And, and it's, it's Paul's words to Timothy. He said, guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. So guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, the treasure or the good deposit which has been entrusted to you. Guard that which has been entrusted to you. To guard that which is uh, so precious to the Lord that he is entrusted to the Bethel community. And, and I, was thinking of, uh, I was thinking of a story. So the Lord, the Lord shared this with me uh, in regards to our community and what he's entrusted to us, just to guard it, just to know what it is. And he led me to Luke chapter two. Because Jesus, like in the, in the flesh, had been entrusted to Mary and Joseph. But they didn't guard what had been entrusted to them because they made it a day's journey away from Jerusalem and they realized Jesus is not with us. Can you imagine? Like we're, we're parents of young parents. I've lost my kids for like 10 minutes and it's the most gut-wrenching feeling. But, but Mary and Joseph traveled a day from Jerusalem and they realized he wasn't with the caravan. He looked, they looked at relatives and acquaintances and they're like, where, where is he? Like, where is he? Where's Jesus? And they had to turn around and go back to Jerusalem and it took them three days to find him. And, uh, and I, I, felt like, I felt like the Lord, this is what the Lord shared with me, but I wanted to, to share it with you, um, is, is, is we've got to guard our hearts from familiarity and presumption. When it comes to the Lord, we've got to guard our hearts from familiarity and assumption, that familiarity and assumption, well, this is what we've always done. We've done it the last 11 years this way, but on the 12th year, Jesus didn't join the caravan. He was in Jerusalem. And what the Lord told me, this is a word for me, but I just felt like I was to share it tonight. What the Lord, what the Lord shared with me, he said, he said, I will not adjust to you. You must adjust to me. I will not adjust to you, you must adjust to me. And I actually, in my Bible, you can come look tonight when I was thinking about sharing this with you, I actually wrote, for after all, you wrote the song, where 
you go, I'll go. Where you, what you say, I'll say. You wrote the song. And then Jen started singing tonight and I was like, oh my gosh, I wrote that in my Bible. I don't write anything in my Bible, but I wrote that in my Bible. And I was like, Lord, I, I, I just sense that, uh, I just sense that there's something new that, that has to do with the old, but it's unto the new. There, there's like a glory, there's a glory that you've tasted, but he goes from glory to glory. And, and, and I, here's the problem is that we sometimes underestimate the two. We, we love the glory and then we love the glory, but sometimes we estimate the two. And I don't know how many O's are in that two, but sometimes it's like glory to, but, but, but the two is unto a greater glory. And I feel like you've been in a two. I feel like you've, you've been from glory to, but I just sense there's a fresh glory, a fresh glory. Like I truly sense it. And, and, and so there's this guarding what's been entrusted to you. There's this, there's this uh, returning. Like if, if, you, if you don't know where he is, returning to where he was. Uh, and, and, and that maturity, this is another thing the Lord showed me. He said, maturity, maturity, maturity in the Lord. Uh, I, you know, I used to think it's about do's and don'ts, but maturity in the Lord is a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. It's being sensitive to his leadership, being sensitive to uh, where he is and what he's doing, both on a personal level and on a, a corporate level. And so a sensitivity uh, to follow, a sensitivity, a bendability, a yieldedness, uh, the today, if you hear his voice, just Lord, you've done something fresh over the last couple of days, but Lord, we're gonna eagerly guard that, that, that which has been entrusted to us. And six months ago, what that meant for me is I had to go on an extended fast. I said, Lord, I'm gonna seek you like I did in the early days. And I felt like he was just provoking a sensitivity to him. It wasn't that anything was off or wrong. It was just that the Lord was, was circumcising my heart in a fresh way. And I, I just sensed there's this sensitivity and, and um, Yeah, there's, a, there's, there's something fresh coming. I feel like even this weekend, it's unto just something significant. I've, I've, I've been here now a few days and I just, I just sense these percolations, like something's percolating, something's bubbling. And, and so, uh, yeah, just to, to guard that, the oil of intimacy is increasing. Um, so just put your hand in your heart. I wanna pray just the Holy Spirit that you would, you would, it says, it says guard by the Holy Spirit that which has been trusted to this house. God, just the, the, the message of your goodness, the message of, of hosting your presence, God, the message of, of, of what your fingerprints have built in this place, Lord Jesus. I sense your zeal for it. And I sense, Lord, your pleasure for where you're taking this house, God, for the greater glory, Lord, for the greater glory, Lord, for the fresh oil, God, for the fresh fire, God, for the new wine, God. And just declare, Lord, that it's from glory to glory. And uh, Father, that, that you're, yeah, you're orchestrating something. You're, you're positioning and, and moving and pruning and, and there's transitions, but Lord, it's all unto, Father, this thing that you're leading. And, and that this house, this, this house, that the, the latter glory is gonna be greater than the former. Just sense a greater glory coming in Jesus' name. So we say yes and amen. We love you. Amen, amen, amen. So I, I wanna talk to you tonight, just a, it's kind of a, a life message for me and um, something that I feel like has been entrusted to our community. And uh, <clears throat> I've shared our story a couple of times, so forgive me if I'm sharing it again, but I don't want to assume that, that people necessarily know who I am. But my wife and I planted a church and uh, it was a, wasn't initially a church, but we started a prayer meeting in uh, the homosexual district of downtown Dallas and in, in a room that, that this business owner called the Upper Room. And so that's how we got our name, just logistically. We didn't name our church. We didn't have a website or media for a long time. I kind of went into this area kicking and screaming. And uh, the Lord really stripped me as a leader, stripped me as, uh, you know, my giftings and preferences and all that I would have envisioned, uh, all the things I thought I was going to do for the Lord. The Lord actually just cornered me and, uh, and just said, you, you, I really don't need you. <laughs> Thank God for those moments. He's like, 
am I enough? Am I sufficient? And, and what he was showing me is that, is that this was his idea, that he was initiating something. And unless he builds it, we labor in vain. And so I just was, was, was in that school of learning to die and learning to just trust and learning to surrender. And, uh, and there was a phrase that he spoke to me about uh, ministering to him, that, that I called you into this place first to minister to me, first to love me. And I want this community to be marked by this ministry loving me and hosting me and, and understanding how to do that. And so we went on a journey together, just learning what that uh, would look like. And I remember there was some young, uh, young CFNI kids, or do we have any CFNI alumni or CFNI, CFNI Christ from the Nations there in Dallas, just I love Christ from the Nations. What's up, Jazzy? I see ya. And, uh, but these CFNI kids came in and they, they were, they were, uh, <laughs> they were innocent and pure enough to actually trust what we were doing. Like, like, we're looking for something like this. Let's tell us, what are you doing? We start sharing and they, they bought into it. And uh, they couldn't make it during the week. So they, 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 they started this prayer meeting on Friday night at 10 p.m. They're like, a lot of our friends are going out on the weekend. We wanna give them an option to come to this prayer meeting. And can we just have a key and set it up and, and, and run the night? And I was like, sure, you guys, here's the key. And, and so I learned uh, through the fire marshal about this meeting because it had grown so quickly over a couple of weeks. And so I actually went up to the meeting and I was blown away by what God started doing with these, these young 20 somethings or probably maybe 200 in the room. And, uh, and I, I walked in and so I was supposed to be, you know, overseeing and maybe making sure there weren't as many people in the room as were in the room, but the Lord was there and I didn't care. And so I, 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 I sat down and I wrote this, I wrote this out. I wrote this out and um, it, was, it was a Friday night in the fall of 2012 and it was at 12.15 in the morning. And this is what I described happening. Um, it says, I'm surrounded by 30, uh, I'm, I'm surrounded by 130 young adults just sitting in a dark room where three brothers and one friend play music over us. They've sung one chorus to one song in 45 minutes, which... <clears throat> it was a new thing then. Yet the presence of the Lord, the Holy Spirit has been here since I walked in the room at 10.02. Since that time, I had this one burning statement in my heart racing through my mind. It overwhelmed me as I knelt on the ground and closed my eyes over and over and over. All I could think and all I could say was this. I'm here to meet with the man who has fire in his eyes. I'm here to meet with the man who has fire in his eyes. I'm looking for, I'm waiting on, I'm seeking tonight the man who has fire in his eyes. Hunger fills my soul, a deep longing awakens again. A depth in me begins to cry out this one cry. I wanna see the man, the one with fire in his eyes. I have to see the man, the one with fire in his eyes. No greater, no desire is greater. Other passions wane, my perspective has changed and my soul has determined tonight I will meet with the man, the one with fire in his eyes. As I look around the room, more and more young people come, staggering in throughout the room. Immediately, they follow suit. They lay on the ground, sitting in a chair, maybe acknowledging someone that they know, but they too are lost, sitting, lying, pacing. They too are here to meet the man with fire in his eyes. It's as if we're all love sick, sick with love, longing, hunger, desperation, zeal are symptoms of hearts that have been stricken, wrecked, undone by this man, the man with fire in his eyes. How close can we get? How much can we see? What more is there to taste? Oh, have you met the man, the one with fire in his eyes? A growing race, a breed of believers, a burning people is arising now all convinced that this pursuit, this desire, this call is all we know, it's all we want. In fact, it's all we have. He, the man, the one with fire in his eyes has taken residence. He's chosen me, he's chosen us. He's desired to put that fire, the one in his eyes, inside of me. And he's desired to put that fire inside of you. It's a fire that consumes, a fire that refines, it's a fire that ruins, it's a fire that burns, it's a fire that marks, it's a fire that heals, it's a fire that overtakes, it's a fire that's never quenched, it's never put out, it's never snuffed. This fire only grows, it only spreads, and it's spreading now, and you know when you two declare, I'm here again to meet the man with fire in his eyes. His name is Jesus. And there's a real fire that burns in his heart. And that fire is an all-consuming fire. Uh, and I feel in this hour, the Lord is simplifying things for the church. 
I feel that there's a simplicity and purity that he's calling us to by once again beholding this one. Like beholding him, knowing him. Like you personally, intimately, your heart getting rooted in the, and established in the knowledge of God, the knowledge of his love for you, the knowledge of his love to you, the knowledge of his love through you. There's a reality that the, the spirit of wisdom and revelation is awakening in the bride once again, and it's a fascination with Jesus. My wife had a dream about two years ago, and uh, she was in, in a, a, a changing room, and she was trying on dresses because she was getting ready for a, 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 her wedding. And, uh, and she would put on a dress, the, 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 the person that was the attendant was bringing her dresses, and she would put on a dress. She would look in the mirror, and she would realize that the dresses were too revealing. Like one of them had like a slit that went up her leg. Another one had uh, uh, the, the, the front was like too low and revealed too much of her, her chest or it was too shimmery and shiny. And so she went through dress after dress after dress. And she finally, she, she goes, psst, she peeks out the, 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 the dressing room and she goes, hey, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a bride. And, and she said this, brides, brides, brides aren't intended to be sexy. They're supposed to be beautiful. And, and, and I, I feel in the body of Christ, the Lord is sending the Holy Spirit and he is power washing the bride of Christ. He is power washing all the makeup and various things that we've put upon her to be relevant, to be attractive, to be something, to be influential. Like there's all these things we've put on her in order to have an impact, in order, in order to, you know, just to do things for God. And I just don't think he's that impressed. I think he's saying, listen, if you'll simply look at me, there's a beauty that I wanna put upon you that you can find nowhere else. There's a beauty when you're gazing upon me. There's a radiance that comes from that. And that radiance is what the world is looking for. That radiance and beauty is actually what's, what they're longing for. There's an ache in their hearts. But we need to be convinced of that. We need to taste that. And it's this simplicity. It's, it's a real simple. It's the one thing that David said. David said this. He said, one thing I ask, this is what I desire, that I may gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and dwell in the temple all the days of his life. I always thought David wrote that on a mountainside. Like he's just like, he's got, you know, a good feast in front of him. And he's just saying, oh, the beauty of the Lord. But if you read that Psalm, everything that can go wrong is going wrong. He's being betrayed, a host of enemies around him. People are trying to devour his flesh. It says, my, my parents have betrayed me. And yet he's like going, oh, but there's this one thing. <laughs> and if I, can, if I can just see the one thing, the one thing is to, the answer to all of these things. It's like, it's like in light of all that I'm facing, if I can just see your face, it's sufficient. The Holy Ghost is uh, one of the things he's doing. I've, someone asked me yesterday what I see in the nations. And uh, one of the things that I see in the nation is, a, is a, it's happening. It's happening in the Latino world, especially in South America. Man, I love South Americans. I, I can't prove this, but I think we better get ready. We're gonna be speaking Spanish in heaven. <laughs> something about, something about that. I don't know, I'm just... You guys, there's a hunger there. And uh, I've seen it in, in South America. I've, I was just in Estonia and we were on the, the border of Estonia and Russia hosting a communion service to end this conflict. Like we're just contending for Jesus to move. And so I was in Estonia, I was in Ukraine. I was with Russian pastors. Uh, I've been to, to India and in the Middle East uh, recently, talked to leaders in Europe and there is, there is a, a thing that the Holy Spirit is highlighting in the bride and it's the return of Jesus. It's the return of Jesus. And I think the Holy Spirit is heaven's great wedding planner and he's awakening a cry in the hearts of the bride and it's saying, come, 
come. And it's not, it's not the Holy Spirit and the bride. It, it can actually be translated the Holy Spirit inside the bride crying, come, come. And you're like, you're like but, but we've got a mission to do. Listen, this cry will fuel the mission. This pursuit of loving him will fuel. The, the great commandment is the fuel for the great commission. And my concern is that we're too busy doing things for God that we're actually missing the one that's right before him us. And, and if we will simplify and come back to this place, and I just sense there's, there's a, a zeal that he has. There's a, there's a burden. Um, you know, we, we, we did this, when Lou comes to town, I will not invite Lou without like ample preparation. Cause every time he comes, I end up in some extended fast and I'm just like Lou, <laughs> but he blew through, he blew through like two years ago. And and it was like the day, this is such a loose story. It was like the day that the entire Jewish world was crying out at 10 a.m. for the revelation of their Messiah. Like the entire Jewish world, they were unified. All the different sects of Judaism were crying out for the revelation of the Messiah. And so Lou comes in, he's preaching that day. Of course he is. And he's like, the entire Jewish world and we need to join them. And so I'm like, okay, Lou, here we go. And so, so he goes into this Maranatha cry. And that word, I mean, I knew it. I knew it's in the Bible. I knew it's, I knew kind of, you know, come Lord Jesus, Maranatha. It was a worship label that was really cool back in the day. Like Maranatha, it's a good word. Um, but all of a sudden, this thing about the return of Jesus and Maranatha hits our community. And Lou, you know, he like submits it to me after he's publicly announced it. So he's like, I feel we're supposed to go into a 40 day fast. And, and then afterwards he's like, is that, do you think that's the Lord? Should we do a 40 day fast? And I'm like, bro. So I cracked off my first 40 after that. I was like, oh my gosh, here we go, Lou. And Lou came down and we, we just had this, this thing, but, but listen to this. Um, my young adult uh, pastor, spiritual son of mine, his name's Aaron. He had a dream uh, the first night of the fast. And with Lou, we're like, we're gonna get in the dream stream and we're gonna take dreams down. And so, I mean, we're just kind of playing the thing and walking it out with him. And so these dreams started to come forth. And the first dream uh, was, was uh, Aaron Smith. He was, he was walking the hallways of heaven in his dream. And, and he stopped and he saw Jesus come out of a room. And he said it was as Jesus was sneaking in to a room in heaven and he went uh, into this, uh, this place in his dream and there was this rug. And, and so Jesus came down and, and he thought that Jesus was gonna get on his knees and pray. But, but instead, of, uh, instead of praying, he actually turned his ear and he was listening. And in the dream, um, and this was, this was for our community, but I think there's something, something for us tonight. And in the dream, Aaron all of a sudden went and, and could see us praying in the upper room. And in the upper room, we were praying this prayer. You can come, will you come? You can come, will you come? And, and Jesus is listening. And then, and then Aaron went back to this room where the Lord was in his dream. And, and these attendants circled around Jesus. And he knew that they were angels and he knew that they had a message from the Father. And these attendants and angels surrounded him. And as Aaron came back into the room, the attendant said this, uh, you can go, you can go. And after that, this, this, this literal tabernacle descended into the city of Jerusalem. And that was the first day of our Maranatha fast. It's a true story. And, and it, it launched us into this, like, I, I wasn't like a big eschatology, Guy. I mean, I have it, but that wasn't a big emphasis, but the zeal of the Lord kissed us. And we've been going on this Maranatha mandate now for almost two years of just sensing, gosh, he's preparing the earth for his coming. It, it, there's, something, there's something about his zeal in this moment that, that you can come, Lord, would you come? And he's waiting for the words from his father, you can go. No one knows the times or days, but the father. He's waiting even now for his father to say that. And so um, I didn't plan on, 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 on sharing that. I, I do wanna focus on one text. Can you go to Luke chapter seven? It all kind of fits the same theme. 
<clears throat> Luke chapter seven, this story has really blessed me personally. Um, you know, Jesus was, Jesus was asked a question in, in Matthew 22, someone came up to him and they're like, just boil it down. Like, what's the most important thing? Like from God's perspective, what's the most important thing? And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said the, the, the greatest commandment is to what? Love God, love God, just love God. Love him with your heart, soul, mind, but to love God. So, so God is answering to this Pharisee, what's most important to God. He says, you loving him is important. And then the second, which is close to, but we need to, distinguish it. The second one is loving people. So loving God is the greatest. And then the second is loving people. And, and I've been on this journey trying to understand, Lord, what does it mean for me to love you? Because if that's your greatest desire, if that's like, if that carries the most weight from your perspective, I need to understand as your son and one that's, that's, that's wanting to honor you and follow you and gonna give an account for my life. When I stand before you, like loving you is a weighty, part of that. Am I right? I mean, what's the greatest? Loving me. Okay, well, what does loving him mean? I, I've really been like, because I think I understand that, but, but, but I realized that as I've asked this question and allowed the Holy Spirit to answer, I've realized how, how kind of, how simple it is, but challenging it is. Because what I love to do is I love to do things for God in the name of loving him. Like I, I love to love people in the name of loving him. I love to prophesy over people. I love to pray for the sick. I love to minister to people based on my love for him. And I think that that's valid. I think there's expressions of our love, but, but I think there's something deeper that he's inviting us into. That there's a, there's a, there's a, 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 a personal invitation, I think, because me loving my wife it, it, it looks like me different than, you know, us up here going, we're Michael and Larissa, we have kids and I can honor her. But, but when, I'm, when I'm like with her, I know her and I know how to love her. We had date night, Wednesday night, Miller household, holies the holies of our evening. I'm gonna love my wife. I know what she likes to eat. I know what she likes to talk about. I know, I know her. And, and I feel like, I feel like I want, I want to give you, uh, I want to give you maybe some, some clarity around what you loving the Lord looks like. Cause I found an example of it. I didn't see it until I felt like the Holy Spirit led me here and said, Michael, this is really important for you to know. If, if loving me is important, you need to know this is an example of someone loving me. And it's, it's Luke chapter seven. So um, Luke seven thirty six. if you're there, say I'm there. And I see, I see two approaches to Jesus here. Uh, one was a Pharisee and he was requesting Jesus to dine with him. And so Jesus entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Now, now a couple of just, my commentary on this is, I think this Pharisee is actually a good dude. I know we give the Pharisees a hard time, but I think this Pharisee actually wanted to know who Jesus was. Jesus was the talk of the town. He was a religious guy. He's inquiring, is this a prophet? Like, like I want to know you, so would you come over? And here's what's beautiful about Jesus is he never declines an invitation. He always shows up. And I think Jesus showed up at the right time, at the right place. I think, I think he knew where to be, he knocks on the door. And this Pharisee has, has a plan. I think he invited his friends over. I think he had multiple course meal. He had the chair set up. He, he had an itinerary for the night. I mean, this is the night where the most famous man in Israel is coming to my home and I'm gonna to get to know him. And again, I think his intent is good, but, but there was another woman. I love this woman. There was a woman um, in the city who was a sinner. And when she learned that Jesus was reclining, so she, she found out, she discovered that Jesus was in proximity to her uh, at the Pharisee's house, she, she goes there. And, and she brings this alabaster vial of perfume and standing behind him at his feet, she begins to weep and wet his feet with her tears. And she kept wiping them with her hair and her head. Then she began kissing his feet and anointing them with perfume. So she, she breaks out the oil, she's weeping and she's kissing his feet. And when the Pharisee whose party this was and who had invited Jesus saw this, he said to himself internally, 
If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of person this woman is and who's touching him, that she's a sinner. So you have two really drastically different approaches to Jesus. Um, this woman crashes Simon's dinner party. And I think the first like notice of her is that she's kissing Jesus's feet. They're probably laying at a table. And, and her response to Jesus provokes something inside of him. Her response to Jesus forces the Pharisee to define who Jesus is. Her response to Jesus confronts his limited understanding of who Jesus was. And, and this is important to see because I think, I think like this woman, I think, I think our pretty dinner parties for Jesus are about to be crashed. In the West, we do church so well. And I'm in Dallas, Texas. So I know I'm, I'm in, I, this is not like a rhema word for this church. I just think big C church in the West, we do church very well. We have our times, places, our dinner tables. And guess what? Jesus always comes. He always honors our invite, but he sits where we ask him to sit. And he receives what we give him. But I believe there's a bride emerging that when, when that bride is in proximity to this man, the wedding party is gonna be crashed. Our itineraries are gonna, be, are gonna be interrupted. It is not going to be business as usual. So guess what? Jesus, loving Jesus, loving Jesus, Tender Jesus knows that this man wants to know who he is, so he tells him a story. And Jesus answered Simon, he's prophetic. He sees what this man is saying inside of himself and he says, Simon, I have something to say to you. Say it, teacher. A money lender has two debtors. One owed 500 denaro, denarii and the other 50. When they were unable to repay, he graciously forgave them both. So which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. He said, you've judged correctly. So he gives a story about forgiveness. And uh, if I had time, I would talk at length about the power of forgiveness. Um, I, I see a real need for us to revisit this topic. Um, forgiveness is not just what gets us into the kingdom. It's the oxygen that we live and breathe. Uh, the older I get in relationships, the more I realize how little I understand what I've been forgiven of and the call to forgive others. So he's pointing to this, like this forgiveness component about God's love towards us. And we have all been forgiven of so much. And, and so I, I could talk about forgiveness, but, but I, I wanna focus on verse 44 because this gets, this gets real interesting to me. In verse 44, Jesus turns towards the woman. So he turns towards this woman who's crashed the party. And Jesus said to Simon, he said, do you see this woman? Now, now everyone saw the woman, but this question to Simon is saying, he's not asking for an answer. He's saying, Simon, you actually didn't see what I saw. And he's gonna show, he's gonna show Simon what he saw. And listen, the only, the only thing that matters about this moment is Jesus's perspective. The only thing that matters is, is what did Jesus see and what is his commentary? Not Simon's commentary, not the woman's commentary, Jesus. Jesus is the Lord of hosts. Like we welcome him into environments like this and he's the guest, but his desire is to be the host. And we're going to see, we're going to see in this narrative, we're gonna see in this narrative, his commentary on what he experienced. Now watch this. Oh, this is good. He said, I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kisses, but she, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with perfume. Here is what Jesus is telling Simon. Simon, I was willing, ready, and available to receive all of those things from you, but you did not offer them to me. She offered me her tears. She offered me her kisses. She offered me her oil. You didn't, and I honored that, but I am not 
going to forbid her from rightly receiving me. Your lack of understanding of who I was at your table is not going to hinder her understanding of who I am. And listen to this. For this reason, verse 47, I say to you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven, for she loved much. Now, hear this. We say this about, well, if you've been forgiven much, you'll love much, loving people. He is not talking about loving people. He is talking about loving Jesus. This is an example of first commandment love. What, what is first commandment love? I take these three things. I think these three things are so important for us to learn to offer to the Lord. The first one were her tears. She offered tears. What do tears represent? Pain. She brought her pain to the Lord. The second thing were her kisses. What are kisses? Kisses are, oh, oh, oh my desires. He wants your affections. Like you've been told, don't trust your affections. Well, don't, you know, the, they're great compasses. They're terrible, you know, masters and lords, but, but, but they serve us, especially when the presence of God is there. Your affections are so, so, so important. Joys of feeling, pieces of feeling. Like, come on, let God be touchy-feely a little bit. In the, in the environments when you're worshiping him. He says, here's my tears, here's my kisses. And then she gives him uh, oil, which was a prepared offering, which represents her strengths. It represents her gifts. It represents her desires. It represents things that she's sacrificially laying before him. Her tears, her kisses, and her treasures. I was recently in a, in a, in a prayer meeting. We do, we, do prayer, um, we do prayer almost every day back home, just, just really taking this like, first love deal. And, and there was this guy, he, 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 was, he was part of like more conservative tradition and, and he was a little weirded out by, by the upper room culture, but his daughter was being transformed. And so he wanted to come because he had seen the fruit of this ministry in his daughter's life. So he started coming to prayer. And I knew, like, you can kind of tell he's a fish out of water, like in the meetings, you know, like we're, we got the flags and dancing and a lot of people are just like, what, what's happening? You can tell he's one of those. But he, he, ends, up, he ends up sitting for, for a couple of weeks and then a week turned into, I think it was like three or four months. And he came up to me on a Sunday morning and he goes, I need to tell you something. He goes, I've grown up in the church. And I gotta thank you for what is happening in this place. I didn't understand it, but the more I sit in this room and the more I watch you love Jesus, the more I'm being transformed. And as he's saying that, he starts crying. And he goes, before coming into this room, I had not cried for 28 years, 28 years. But he said, in this room, I found my tears. And as he's like saying, I found my tears, I like, <laughs> you know, we're both crying and hugging and like, oh, Jesus is amazing. What's he doing? He's unlocking his heart. I think there's something so attractive to cultures where first love is expressed. And that happened tonight. It, this, we were there. I mean, we're here. But I'm saying that that is a message in itself. When those that don't know the Lord come in here, and they see a culture of people loving him, it provokes and goes, what do they know that I don't? There was a, there was a young Muslim kid that uh, was a, a business associate of a friend of mine. And he was looking, um, he, was, he was from Dubai and, and very wealthy family, prominent family, but Muslim. And, uh, and he, he had heard that there were cute girls at the upper room, which I mean, uh, the harvest is plentiful at the upper room. So like, <laughs> There's, there's a lot of marriages happening, a lot of cute young, you know, 20 somethings. And so he was in the right place, but he came on a Sunday morning and man, Corey Russell was preaching. And if you know Corey, it is like diesel gasoline. Like, you know, he's like, I need a baby to punt. Like, he's like, he's just like, give me something to, a demon to cast out. I mean, he's intense and he's going for it. And so I watched him though. I watched him and I was like, oh, it's probably a little much for him. And, uh, and so uh, the service went, but he came up to me afterwards and he was like, man, this was, this was strange to me. I'm not used to an environment like this. And I go, hey man, you, you pray, don't you? He goes, oh yeah, we, we love prayer. And I said, well, we pray throughout the week. Why don't you just come into our prayer meeting? I think it'll be a little more digestible for you. And so 
he was like, okay, I'll come this week. I think I have some time. So he came to a noon set, noon set. And I was sitting on the side of, uh, of the room. It was an empty room. No one was in there. We had a little girl on the piano. And then we had an intercessor who's our women's intercessor prayer leader. We call them prayer leaders. She's prayer leading, worship leader. And then I'm on the side and I'm just reading my Bible, spending time with Jesus. And I watch Ahmad walk in. And I'm like, oh, he didn't know I was there, but he walks to the very front. And these girls were singing about the love of Jesus and they were singing about his love for us and all our, our love for him. And, and then it went from love to him being our savior. And then it went from love to savior to him saving us from our sins. Then it went from love, savior, saving us from our sins that he wants to save us right now. They move into this prophetic flow. And then Javanna, who's our little, she's just, she's not from earth either. Like she just... <laughs> One of those girls, she gets up, lays the mic down and goes and starts praying for him. I watch him take his shirt off, like his, he had a jacket on, takes his jacket on, lifts his hands up, falls to his knees and gives his life to Jesus. First love, it provoked something in him. And that spirit of wisdom and revelation, And uh, the last thing I wanna point out about this story, and then we're just gonna love on Jesus. Is that good? Yes. Has this been encouraging? I hope it has been. So, hey, what, here's what I love about this, and, and this fits right into that testimony, is that this woman in this story, this woman who positioned herself in a place of honor and worship before the Lord, do you know that she does not say a word in the entire story? But Jesus looks at her. So after he says, after he says, uh, uh, I say to you, her sins which are have been forgiven, she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. Then he said to her, look, he says to her, he says to her, your sins have been forgiven. He says that to her. Now, I, here's what I think is, 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 is so powerful about what we're talking about tonight, is that when we posture ourselves in the place of worship and we give the Lord our pain, when we give the Lord our affections, we give the Lord those things, it actually positions us to receive from him. You're not gonna outgive him. And, I, and she, the Bible says she was a sinner. So we know that she needed forgiveness. But I think if she was an invalid or if she was, if she was sick, I think he would have said, not your sins are forgiven, but your diseases are healed. Uh, meaning, meaning when we come into this posture before him, he has the ability to meet every single need. He itemizes those, those things to, to, to what we're bringing him. It's like, oh, here's my, here's, uh, you get forgiveness. Here's love. Here's love that casts off fear. Here's deliverance. Here's freedom. He just has this ability to do something even beyond what, what I'm doing right now. I'm thankful for the preaching of the word, but there's something about us loving him collectively where, where it's irresistible for him. And he comes and he's searching our hearts and he's searching the rooms and relationships. And he's, he's like, oh, you need forgiveness. You need healing. You need deliverance. You need a revelation of my love. You need a revelation of my supremacy and my beauty. You need a revelation that I'm the king of kings and Lord of lords. You need a revelation that I'm the creator. You need the revelation that I'm your provider. He has the ability to reveal himself to us by the power of his Holy Spirit as he's enthroned upon our praises and our love. Ha! Why don't we do it together? Just, just, just love on him for a little bit. And I, we're gonna maybe pray into some things, but I, I feel like the Lord's gonna baptize us in first love again, baptize us in just a, a burn for this one thing, Lord. Lord, that you would just set the, the fire that's in you, set it upon the altar of my heart. Um, I, just, I just sense that. So Lord, would zeal for your house, zeal for this moment. Lord, would it touch your people? And uh, I'm gonna ask, can I, we sing a song? Oh, there's Jen, what's up? Let's just love on Jesus.
if you would just close your eyes for a second as, as they're getting ready, I, I just want you to think about being in proximity to the Lord. And, you know, I can't think of this woman who was a sinner. She's like, I am going to take a vial of perfume. I am going to go for his feet and I'm gonna kiss them. And I'm gonna wipe his feet with my hair. Like there was a plan when she got in proximity and the Lord is about to come in a beautiful way. But I want you to think about giving him something. I want you to think about finding his feet. I think some of us need to stand up. Some of us need to kneel. Some of us need to lay on the ground. Some of us may need to blow a shofar. I don't know, but there's a response Oh my gosh, I just empowered the shofar guys. <laughs> my point is, is that some of us, we need to respond to him. We need to bring something to him. Tears, kisses. I feel the Lord, I feel that there's a, uh, I feel some of us, we need to bring our minds to him that there's a, a soundness of mind that he wants to give you in the place of worship. There's been a duplicity and that duplicity has actually caused, uh, it's caused a level of confusion and heaviness. And I, I feel like the Lord, you know, um, it's Paul in 2 Corinthians eleven three says, I'm afraid some of you have been deceived as Eve was by the craftiness of the serpent and your mind has been led astray from simplicity and purity of devoting yourself to Jesus. And tonight your mind is returning. Your mind is returning to simplicity and purity. There's a soundness of mind. So, Jen, I'm just gonna stay up here and pray as you sing. Drink from the cup in your head. Lay 
back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I've melted in your peace. So First love, you only. You're still my only one. After all these years, you're still my first love. You're still my only one. When I lay in my bed at night, God, you're. felt like the Holy Spirit was putting his finger on, on regret. And I think we really don't like to feel pain. But the Lord can turn pain into intimacy. Yeah. And I felt like there were some of you that could identify with that testimony of the man who hadn't cried. But that, that there was regret. And if you'll, allow, if you'll allow the Lord to touch your heart, he'll bring about a godly sorrow. And you can leave here having been healed of that pain and not be numb anymore. There's a numbness that he wants to heal. There's a numbness that he wants to heal. It's very dangerous to be in environments where the Lord is present and to be numb. It's dangerous. It's scary to be in places where the presence of the Lord is and to be numb. And there's an invitation right now just he's just searching your heart he's searching your heart it's his kindness that leads us to repentance there's a situation a relationship a memory a moment that he's just searching it's unto freedom it's unto healing. Just open your heart. Just open your heart. Just say, Lord, I regret that. And just invite him. Lord, I regret that. I want you to come and touch. Come and heal that memory. I see healing coming to memories something that you've done or something that you didn't do that you wish you would have done pain he can turn pain into the sweetest places the valley of weeping into a place of springs 
Cover those places. Wash it to make them new, to make them tender. He's restoring tenderness. He's restoring tenderness. Oh, he's restoring tenderness. You don't have to hide. No hiding. No hiding. No hiding, no hiding, no hiding, no hiding, no hiding, no hiding, no hiding. The enemy would love for you to think that you need to hide that from the Lord or from your own heart. But there's healing, there's a balm today to make all things new. Just a simple acknowledgement. Thank you, Lord. Just a simple acknowledgement before him. I just hear him just knocking. Remember that? Remember that? Remember that? I want to heal that. Marriages are getting healed even now as we seek his face. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I can the garden. separate 
of Jesus in this room that have that have experienced great heartache and disappointment prayers seemingly unanswered and I feel like even what Jen's singing tonight I felt like there was like a you know when, when two people get married and they say their vows and they're like they have no idea what they're saying. They have no idea. <laughs> but if you've ever been to a vow renewal, and you're looking at two people saying those vows again, and they're like, you're watching them and you're going, well, they know what they're saying. They've been in sickness and in health, and they've been for richer or for poor. And I just feel an invitation tonight for the heart that has like, you burned for him many, many years. And there was a, a fresh, a fresh touch of love and intimacy. That's like, I don't know about, I don't, I don't, I can't make sense of all of that, but I still love you. I still want you more than anything. Even if, even if I never understand this disappointment, I yes. still want you. Yes. I still want you. Yes. You still want me. Yes. Oh, so we just surrender to your love again, yes. Jesus. Oh, it was your love first. 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 Come touch us, touch us, touch us. If that's you, just, just say, Lord, touch me again with your heart that burns. Touch me again because I love you. 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 In sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus.
Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you. More than anything, more than anything, Jesus, I love you. I saw Jesus sitting across from Peter and, uh, and, and you're saying, do you love me, Peter? And Peter was like, Lord, I, you know I love you. He said, feed my sheep. He said, do you love me? He said, Lord, I, you know I love you. He said, tend to my flock. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And I felt like um, there was someone that was in pastoral ministry and you had a failure. It was a, there was a moral failure and you, you have just felt disqualified. And I, I feel tonight the Lord is just removing the mark of that shame. That what, what he, he has removed that as far as the East is from the West. He can't remember it, so you need to stop. And I, I feel like there's a commissioning and a belief again and you're gonna get back in line with your destiny that that chapter is over. And I, I'm not gonna have you publicly say anything, but I just wanna pray. And I think that there may be some people online as well that are watching this, but I just wanna pray that you will receive his love, receive his forgiveness. And I feel there's a real commissioning, tend to my sheep, shepherd my sheep, like, like do what's in front of you. He's got purpose for you now. You are no longer in timeout. <laughs> You're not in timeout. I just see the Lord saying, it's time to shepherd again. It's time to pastor again. It's time to be restored. And so, uh, Lord, would you just just remove that shame? And uh, in the name of Jesus, I think that's a really significant moment for someone. And then I just want to lastly pray. Can we just sing that one, Jen one more time? Um, Jesus, we love you. Just sense that there's a first love. How many of you have sensed just kind of an alignment tonight? Like there's this first love fire. It's a fire. It's mas fuego. It's hitting your heart. And I, I feel like we just need to, sometimes, sometimes we need to sing it to get it into our hearts. And I feel this song, it's just this recalibration of first love. Um, and so can we stand and let's just sing this again to it, that we love him and let that fire burn inside of you. Yeah. You're still my first love, does that sound good?
put your hand on someone and just ask for the, the love, the love of Jesus, just that burning fire that it would be all consuming. I just see him interrupting us in the middle of the night. I see him interrupting your schedule tomorrow. Just him saying, come away with me. And just sense this love sick heart that he's uh, provoking. So Lord, we, we give you the rights. We give you the rights to our hearts, to our affections, to our time, to our day. Lord, come and consume all that can be consumed. Wake us up in the middle of the night. Do whatever you wanna do, but come with your love, your zeal. Woo. Come on, sing this while you're singing it to him. Like you too. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none here, and there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. So it's a wonderful, hard job to try and close these meetings. <laughs> but I just, uh, let's just stay just for a little bit longer. Just close your eyes. And uh, you've had the van lead you in a love song, but why don't you just begin to lift up your own love song to Him? Whatever words you want to put on your lips, why don't you just begin to tell Him how much you love Him? How thankful you are for His love how thankful you are that He saved you, that He redeemed you. <laughs> oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love your presence, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Jesus, you are the guest of honor in this room. You are the one reason why we came from all over the planet. 
We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. I pray that we would not be like Simon, but we would be like the lady with the oil. We love you, Jesus. Can we just thank Michael and Larissa? Such an amazing job. We love you guys. Thank you so much. We have an amazing ministry team that are going to come down here. Our wonderful students. They're going to put their hand up. If you would love prayer for anything. If you need healing in your body. If you need healing in your spirit. They're going to put their hands up. So ministry team, where you at? You come find one of these amazing humans. They're going to pray for you. Can we also just give it up for our wonderful worship team and Jen and them who stayed. Thank you so much, guys. And if the Lord is touching you and you're on the floor, just continue to let Him touch you. So these guys with their hands up, you can come forward to, for prayer. And again, if you are a visitor here tonight, thank you for coming. This is church.